The 60s were an incredible decade. From civil rights to the sexual revolution, people were rising up and shifting the cultural landscape. And it's during this time that a man with an extraordinary eye for photography began Cult Studios and introduced us to a new way of looking at the male physique. Jim French began Cult Studios in the late 1960s, beginning the most successful empire of male nude imagery since Bob Miser's Athletic Model Guild. The gay community had just torn its way out of the Stonewall Inn and into the public eye. The U.S. Post Office had just lifted its ban on male frontal nudes passing through the mail system. Under the pseudonym Rip Cult, French created a sleek visual language for worshipping the male body. On tonight's episode, we're going to recognize Jim French, the man behind the camera better known in the adult entertainment world as Rip Cult. This is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Before we continue, I want to remind you to help this channel out by clicking the subscribe button and selecting the bell icon for notifications to see more content like this. Jim French was about to become a man who was ready to blow the lid off the repressive roof that covered American culture for so long. And he did so at a time when publishing and distributing explicit material would result in harassment and jail sentences. Born in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania in July 1932, James Thomas French was an American artist, photographer, illustrator, filmmaker, and publisher. He is best known for his association with Cult Studio, one of the most successful gay male erotica companies in the United States. French began his career after graduating from the Philadelphia Museum School of Art as a commercial artist primarily based in fashion illustration. In 1953, the year before his graduation from the museum school, he joined the United States Army Reserves and went on active duty in 1955. French earned an honorable discharge from the service in 1957. Settled in New York City, he pursued a successful freelance career as an advertising illustrator for several Madison Avenue advertising firms. During this time, one of his main clients was Columbia Records, where he produced portraits of stars like Johnny Cash, Frank Sinatra, Johnny Mathis, and Barbara Streisand. French also worked freelance in New York City, having an office on Madison Avenue and working for BBDO, Young and Rubicon, and other high-end advertising agencies drawing everything from storyboards for commercials to comps for ads. After that, French got an agent and started doing fashion drawings for Neiman Marcus and Bergdorf during the lucrative Mad Men era of New York City advertising. French drew homoerotic drawings in his spare time under the pseudonym of Arian. His drawings were offered in 1966 through Ed Wilde's Times Square Studio, as well as his own short-lived mail-order venture, The Aryan Studio. French was approached by a friend from his army days, Sal Stolman. Stolman had seen some of his Aryan drawings and wanted to create a physique studio in New York City. Over dinner one day, Stolman suggested to French that he draw bodybuilders for reproduction and sale. French adopted a new pseudonym for this venture, Kurt Luger, and under the name Luger Studios began producing more masculine figured illustrations, which featured leathermen, cowboys, wrestlers, and other similar archetypes. French kept his day job, but began this new venture with a set of six drawings. They placed a few ads in Weeder Publications, a magazine published by Joe Weeder, and the response was spectacular. The drawings were not full frontal, but they were sexy. Luger Studio artwork first appeared as two drawings from the Cowboy series in the May-June 1966 issue of Young Physique. This series of six to eight drawings was advertised in other male erotica magazines and was available for purchase through mail order. The success of Luger Studio developed quickly after being featured in the pages and on the covers of a wide assortment of physique magazines. Saul Stoneman bought French's interest in the studio in February of 1968 and briefly ran the business on his own. However, now featuring photographs and 8mm films from substandard producers, Luger Studio did not attract enough interest to survive beyond 1968. It was around that time that French met Lou Thomas and started Cult Studios in 1967. Cult? Luger? Are we seeing a pattern here? On December 5th of 1967, Jim French and Lou Thomas, a friend and astute businessman, took out a business license to form Cult Studio. Although originally named to evoke the image of a cult pistol, the studio quickly changed its cult image to that of a stallion. 
Now, there were photographers way before Jim French, and even photographers specializing in the male physique, as we will examine later on in the season. But Jim French's style featured hyper-masculine soldiers, cowboys, and bikers. French may have been the first finely trained artist to work in photography with male nudes. In 1967, Jim French began to use the name Rip Colt, and he produced highly detailed drawings for books, magazines, and calendars. French and Thomas began doing this when there were still laws banning homosexuality in many states. During this time, they used small, independent printing presses and reproduction studios, whose activities were regularly targeted by authorities for obscenity laws. When the Polaroid camera came on the scene, Jim French jumped at the technology. Not having to rely on processing the images, he started portraying male models for research studies and their edginess built a new market, exuding with countercultural cool that influences Robert Maplethorpe, Herb Ritz, and Bruce Weber. French was in Florida when the Polaroid was invented and introduced. In order to make his vision more believable, French looked to Polaroids for the answer. Before the camera's advent, it had been a challenge getting erotic subject matter that was shot on film processed, as many venues were reluctant to deal with the material. The Polaroid camera, which contained its own processor, solved that issue with its instant results. In the initial years of the company, Colt Studio released French's illustrations under the Rip Colt name and photo sets of masculine male models. The studio eventually added short films, magazines, and calendars. The studio was based in New York City for six years, and then in 1974 relocated to Studio City in California due to French's frequent travels. It was around that time that French realized he didn't really need a business partner. He needed a business manager. Thomas and French remained business partners until eventually it became a toxic work environment. French bought the company's shares, owned by Lou Thomas, who soon formed his own business, Target Studios, a venture which provided the underground demographic with quality homoerotic art and film. Cult Studio grew into one of the most successful gay photography studios of its time and offered the highest quality male erotica commercially available. Jim French's company was famous not only for its stable of male models, but also for its magazine brands, which included Spurs, Cult Men, Manpower, and its film venue, Cult Studio Presents. French ran the company until 2003, when he sold the studio to former Falcon Studios director John Rutherford and his partner Tom Settle. Jim worked very hard to build his brand and a business, but feels he sold at the right time. With the rate of piracy in the world becoming so prevalent, Jim sold Cult Studios in 2003 and started a business in fine arts. He attributes the internet from saving him from going too far. For a few years after the sale of Cult Studio, Jim French continued to privately sell salon-style prints of his photographs before he settled into quiet retirement. French's photographs and illustrations can be found in many private and public collections. Jim French passed away peacefully in his sleep at his Palm Springs, California home on June 15, 2017. Jim French's pioneering work in modern masculine male nude photography helped countless young and closeted gay men have a place and provide role models. He helped create images of men that are still popular today. According to Jim French, his timing was just right. He began working on his nudes after the sexual revolution had exploded into the zeitgeist, allowing artists of all mediums to revel in their sexual expression. Today, French's images have become icons of a singular moment in gay history. Post Stonewall and pre-AIDS. Post Beefcake and pre-VHS. These days, new concepts of what makes a man and gender fluidity represent a freedom away from the classic construction of the butch man. Nevertheless, Jim French influenced the ideals of male beauty forever with astonishing skill and an eye for the subtle erotic. But Cult Studio was born of an era of fantasy. It's men existing only in French's photographs. There is a tradition of these communication gaps between gay men. The narrative always broken into disparate eras with disparate priorities. Fun fact, a sex shop in London hung a t-shirt made by designer Malcolm McLaren that reproduced an image of Jim French's called Longhorns. It was later worn by Sid Vicious, the lead singer of the Sex Pistols. Jim had no idea that his image was being used and never received royalties for his art. However, it is a testament of how far his work had infiltrated and inspired mainstream culture. 
You've been watching Demons to Find Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Telegram. If you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn, where you can help this YouTube channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande. And if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. Cheers. Cheers.